that popcorn crunch can only mean one thing. Welcome to the No Dunks podcast series film session. Today, here in the Classic Factory, we're reviewing the brand new 2022 sports documentary on Netflix called the Redeem Team. I'm J.E. Skeets, and alongside me, as always, we got Tass Mellis. It'd be very nice if we had popcorn right <laughs> oh, here, right yeah. now. Not nice for everyone listening. No. <laughs> but nice for us. For our tummies, for sure. Uh, we got the Top Shot Hot Boy, Trey Kirby. Ayo. Ayo. And over yonder, making the magic happen, our resident film critic. It's J.D. Hello. There he is. Mm. And here we are. Very excited to talk about this new doc. But a little housekeeping before we get into it. Next week, starting on Monday... Running all the way through Friday, we'll be recording our live season preview podcast, our burning questions about the upcoming NBA season. We're talking awards, like who's going to win MVP? Who's going to be the most underrated team heading into the new season? How many wedgies will there be in 22-23? And many more. So many questions. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the answers. We have to decide on the questions, by the way. That's yeah. the number one burning This weekend, question. that's what our homework. Questions? What are the yeah. questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to lock those in, but there will be a lot of questions. There will be answers, and we'll be debating uh, many of those cues. So that is next week, all week long, live at 10 a.m. Eastern here from the Classic Factory on YouTube, and of course, flipped into a podcast later. Email in your questions and your comments about anything about the upcoming season, about this documentary we're going to talk about, about life. Send them in to nodunksattheathletic.com, or you can tweet them in at nodunksinc. That's I-N-C on the end. And grab some No Dunks merch. I see TK wisely rocking the Stream Team, a.k.a. Dream Team No Dunk shirt, available over at nodunks.com. That that pops, man. You don't wear that a lot. I was saving it. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> totally saving it until the time was right. Uh, I'll probably bring it back when they do a documentary on the Stream Team. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, given 30 years and eh, maybe, yeah, maybe. And we'll be hearing from, uh, you know, two morning poops <laughs> or something like that. I remember the time they started on time. <laughs> Wild stuff. Yeah. So go to nodugs.com. Immaculate items always available. T-shirts, hoodies, T-shirts, mugs. Okay. Some fast facts here about the Redeem team. Uh, it was just released. October 7th on Netflix. The director is John Weinbach, who is a producer on The Last Dance and the other dream team about the Lithuanian uh, Olympic team and the comedy store. Did anybody watch that? JD? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah. So he was uh, a part of that as a producer, but he's now directing this one. This stars, well, <laughs> the Redeem team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, mainly in, in terms of talking heads, I would say it's it's LeBron, Wade, Melo, and then Coach K, I think, are your four... Four major ones, and then there's some bit players, which we'll get into. Yeah, and that producer credits to LeBron and Wade. That's right, and Maverick Carter. That's a good call. Mm -hmm. That's a good call. Uh, The synopsis, okay, come on. Follows the story of the 2008 (laughs) U.S. Olympic men's basketball team and how the Redeem team set a new standard for American basketball. Were you you entertained? It's about an hour and a half long, hour 40. Uh, You know the story, obviously, but what do you thought? What do you think? I was entertained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the goosebumps of the final game, even though I know the outcome of the U.S. Spain game in the finals, was great. They yeah. depicted it well. Uh, it was a game that never got closer than six points in the last few minutes. Yeah, I, you know, it was it was close throughout the game, but uh, the Americans very clearly on camera saying we couldn't put those motherfuckers away. <laughs> a lot of swearing, we couldn't put them away. And Spain continuously fighting back. Uh, you know, they called it one of the best basketball games ever played. It well, Yeah, that may be a little, a little extreme, yeah, uh, yeah. but um, it was a damn good basketball game. They and gave they gave in this documentary, I felt like like 25 minutes oh, yeah. to maybe not that game, but like it was an hour into the movie and it was like, we just have now got to the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. And I like that they let it breathe a little bit in terms of like their redemption of teams that they had lost to in prior years building up to the They could have got some more grease. Yeah, I'd yeah. Say. It was like, <laughs> they, 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 that kind of got skipped over. There was a lot of, hey, Larry Brown 2004 couldn't put the team together. 06 was the game that broke the U.S.'s back. Mm. I mean, they decided sure. to put Krzyzewski in charge after 04. Uh, but right. 06... Feeble World Championships where they lose to Baby Shaq and, and Greece. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there was a mention of Baby Shaq. Yep. Uh, there wasn't uh, any coverage of the press conference, which I, I know... Greeks get really upset about because Krzyzewski after the game said, oh, you know, number four was really good passing it to number seven who gave it to number 14. Didn't know their names. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, you know, there was a little bit of that disrespect. I, I think that was a, yeah, as a 
as a Greek Canadian American, I would have I would have enjoyed that <laughs> sure. a little bit more. But whatever. Um, it, yeah, I was entertained. There were, yeah, they they went through a lot of history. That's that's for sure. What'd you think, Trey? I thought it was super entertaining and. What a fun throwback because kind of our media careers were starting around the time uh, Team USA was having their struggles in the Olympics in the World Cup and then going into the Beijing Olympics as well. Graydon mentioned on no breaks earlier this week, the gold medal game against Spain, it feels like to him is the event he knows more people that woke up at 3 a.m. to watch. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly right. That was a huge deal uh, and a fun time on the basketball internet to be logged on for that and chatting in a live blog or whatever we were doing back then for Ball Don't Lie Skeets. It was really fun. It took me way back to those moments and reminded me of a lot of things that I had forgotten. Like, you're totally right, Tass. The 06 loss against Greece is kind of a forgotten yes. loss. The fact that they actually run into Greece and then Argentina and then Spain twice during the Olympics run, it really is a redemption story yep. that they have to beat all these teams that beat them yep. in the past. I, I just thought, you know, for something that happened so recently, it was awesome to be taken back to that time. I remember exactly where I was for four games in my life, okay? <laughs> and I will quickly go through them. I remember where I was, of course... For the Raptors winning the championship, I was in Jurassic Park. They were playing, uh, you know, against the Warriors in California. So I was there. I remember where I was for that one. That one's a no-brainer. I remember where I was for Game 7 of the East Semifinals matchup between the infamous Vince Carter graduation game mm. where he comes back and, uh, you know, the Raptors lose to Iverson and the Sixers. I was in Grand Bend. I've shared this story before. <laughs> we stumbled upon some bar. This is, in, like, this is when in Canada, you know, it was tough to find maybe a game like or at least to be like oh there's a raptors game like i wonder i hope the bar will have it on like it sounds insane now but that was a thing sounds like a great document yeah that's right we're working <laughs> on it i remember where i was incredibly for the usa puerto rico 2004 Olympic game where they lose. They get hammered. I did forget that part. I wouldn't have minded a little bit more. Peter John Ramos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got some Royal highlights. Wait, that was Royal nice. was balling. Oh, but, baby. But I was at my you know, ex-girlfriend's cottage with a bunch of friends, and we had that game on, and we were like, oh, my God, Team USA. Like, <laughs> they're not invincible. Like, they're being beat here. Like, this is wild. This is, of course, the Iverson Marbury Duncan team with all the young guys that we'll get to uh, in, in LeBron Wade and, uh, and Melo. And then I remember where I was for the gold medal USA Spain game you said it was like yeah it was super super late east coast time I was at Colette who you guys know her sister's house in Guelph because they had had rib fest that weekend (laughs) and I'm like I have to stay up and live blog this game (laughs) and that's where I watched it at like yeah like the crack of dawn and I think Ken stayed up with me and maybe Nate and stuff like that so those are the four games I remember I can't believe like this is Uh, one of them Uh, that's not going to make for a great documentary no rib fest is incredible another small 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 town Ontario uh, the people are talking about the 08 rib fest in Guelph (laughs) I'm telling you man so I mean this look what I'm saying is this documentary was literally made for someone like me. I'm an Olympic sicko. I know some people have strong opinions about the Olympics, and sure, fair enough, but I love the Olympics. I always have. Of course, it's a basketball documentary, and Trey, you said it. It's like right in our wheelhouse. It's sort of weird to see a documentary, too, that's like, I guess, old, like looking back, of course, that it's all HD. Yeah, but it's all like point, high yeah. quality images for the most part. It's like not, you know, it's not grainy and stuff like that. What? There was some incredible work done in the post-production studio for like the 88 soul footage, like yeah, they did make it look the U S like, versus yeah. the USSR. Yeah. A lot of the wide shots looked really grainy. And then there's some sort of rendering, adding color <laughs> to the Russian jerseys. What is that process? Cause that they looked phenomenal. Like, like any of those super like the, old stuff you're saying. Yeah. Well, 88. Yeah. So a lot of the shots look bad, but then there's some of them, you know, bad as in SD, but some of the shots were just the, the color added, the red was popping. It looked like, it was shot yesterday. Well, maybe they got like film from, I don't know, the Olympic Committee or something like yeah. that. Is it possible? Yeah. For some of these? Uh, well, JD, what'd you think uh, overall? I mean, you're not a, you're not a diehard basketball sicko uh, like we are. That's so right. What are your thoughts? I'm not a, I'm not a sicko, but uh, uh, I dabble. I dabble in the basketball. Yeah. Uh, it's been my career for the last 16 years. <laughs> so, uh, and I do, uh, Trey, this did bring me back. It brought me back to just a bunch of players I kind of forgot about, like mm-hmm. Scola and, uh, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. even like seeing Manu so young and uh, out there. It was, uh, it was great, you know, as a Canadian. And I also enjoy the Olympic skeets. So it was sort of like 
you know, rooting for the enemy because there hasn't been a single Olympic event that I wasn't rooting against the U.S., <laughs> including, <laughs> you know, including all of the games that uh, you, you see in this documentary. So uh, so it was cool. But I, I did find myself going, man, I'd love to see it from the Argentina's perspective or the, the task, like the Greek side of it, when, you know, when they handed their asses to them. So, uh, but, you know, uh, I was thoroughly entertained, I have to say. And so was uh, Rachel and, and so was Jackson. Oh, we nice. were totally into it. So, uh, yeah, great job. Yeah, it was a funny part. Was it Pepe Sanchez? It was uh, Pepe. When he was like, when they did the upset and he was like, hey, it's basketball, it's five on five. It's not tennis. Yeah, <laughs> it's not tennis. tennis line <laughs> like that because uh, it's not an individual sport. Yeah, I. Uh, you bring up the Olympics. There was one moment I felt bad for the American team when they were staying on the cruise ship in Athens yeah. in 2004. Yeah. And you they, were, were you at a, you I were, was there. It, yeah. I think they, they could have came and hung out at Anzalo's. Me and Angelo <laughs> were, we had lots of room. Uh, they could have hung out there, but they were on a cruise ship on the water the entire time. They didn't hang yeah. out in the Olympic village whatsoever. So this was a, a few years after um, 9-11 and there were the security concerns. It was the first summer Olympics after 9-11. The and, invasion of Iraq too, uh, that they point out. Yeah, yeah so uh, there was uh, yeah, the security concerns. They didn't feel the Olympics as they did when they went uh, in 2008, uh, which was you know, very well told, I thought, uh, seeing uh, Kobe at all the American events wearing a cutoff shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Always a cutoff shirt. Always, yeah. <laughs> Never wearing a tee. But they felt the Olympics, enjoyed the Olympic experience. And, and, and uh, to get to Kobe, I think that was the best part for me. Mm -hmm. I like the way they went about depicting Kobe because mm -hmm. they could have pussyfooted around it a little bit more and said, he, you know, he was a great teammate and all that. But they came in, they started with, he's an asshole, essentially. Right, right, right. Uh, he's a jerk. But uh, he, they, they made a, a good sort of, they made it clear that he is, you know, the last of the guys that, aren't friends with anybody basically mm -hmm. and uh he he was he was able to make friends on everybody on that roster i think kobe uh would enjoy the way he was depicted <laughs> uh, because you know it was a little last dance like with jordan uh, but they didn't have to do it the difference is kobe obviously isn't producing this and he didn't have his hands in it but i think you know kobe the the loner the no friends angle the Hey, he was the guy who was working out while we were at the club in yeah. Vegas, uh, which I could have used some more uh, club footage. You club know. tryst? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nora perked up at that part. She's like, hey, I've been there. <laughs> uh, like, cool. Sounds like a chill, relaxing uh, place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get home at four, and Kobe's happens. already you know, going down to the gym. He's got his workout gloves on. Uh, yeah, low set. I like how the time kept changing. It yeah. was like yeah. at one point it was six in the morning. It was five in the morning. It was four in the morning. Yeah, but uh, yeah. the point I, is he was up early. And I like Mello saying, you know, at, at, Basically, at the end of the week, we were all on the Kobe schedule. I like, not, I'm not going. At, I'm not waking up at 4:30 like Kobe. But I was there after breakfast. I was working out. But I liked the depiction of Kobe. I, I, I thought that was uh, very well done. They didn't sugarcoat his standing in the NBA as well. Like this was 08, and this was when he basically demanded a trade. You know, j just a couple years after that, and yeah. uh, he was. You know, this was the second part of his career. So I, I think, I think that was well done. He, he was obviously the centerpiece of the team mm -hmm. when it came down to it and hitting those shots against Spain. And so that was a great arc in, in this film. I thought that was well done. Who was the star to you in terms of like talking to the camera in their interviews? Was it LeBron? Was it, was it Wade? Was it Melo? Was it someone else? Like a, like a boozer or a bot? Like who's your favorite? Like they all, um, they all, I thought they were all pretty amazing and pretty open. It yeah. Like it. I mean, to me, the star is LeBron. LeBron is the star just because he's there throughout the entire thing. And I kind of feel like he was a little bit on his Kobe Bryant trying to swear as much as he possibly could, mm -hmm. which is when Kobe started swearing was like 2007, 2008. Like Bill Plaschke mentions, this was the beginning of the next act of yeah. Kobe's career. So for me, I did like the way he was depicted, but I was really missing hearing from Kobe sure. because this is when he became a legend in the NBA is when all of these younger players got around him and are like, he's working harder than anybody. Yeah. It changed the culture of the NBA, no doubt about it going forward. All those guys started winning titles, started really buttoning down and figuring and, you know, devoting themselves to the NBA the way that Kobe had mm -hmm. for his entire career. So not being able to hear from him, definitely sad, but the way they did it, I thought was incredible. I love seeing LeBron as like a chemistry guy. Yeah. Like when you watch him, and you watch the way he interacts with his teammates, 
for the most part, as long as things are going well, it looks like a good time to be on a LeBron James team, right? Like when he was on that Cavs team in 2010 and they would all be posing before the games and he would be taking the pictures of him or he would be in the fake picture, that kind of stuff. You're like, wow, he looks like a fun guy to be around even though he's the leader of the team. You saw that a ton, I thought, uh, in this documentary. And I thought it was cool to see him making the effort to be that guy as well. Yeah. Great footage of him leading Kobe's 30th birthday party. <laughs> the, the the happy birthday. Yeah. That, that was very neat. Obviously, uh, uh, a very uh, tough moment seeing Kobe with uh, one of his daughters holding her oh there. Oh, my God. Anytime you see that oh, on, yeah. on screen, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And then after they won the gold yeah. medal... Uh, both uh, Natalia and Gianna there. Uh, that was uh, yeah, a- extremely extremely heart wrenching. Uh, but yeah, the 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 back to LeBron. Uh, he was uh, yeah, he, he was he was fun, LeBron. <laughs> he was that, fun, yeah. Yeah, there was a lots lots of that stuff, and and yeah, they did it very well. They they painted the the dichotomy very clearly. Kobe, I ain't your friend. I'm here to work. Yeah, gonna run through Paul Gasol's chest, which we'll get to to uh, to LeBron, which is you know a very different type of alpha yeah. dog as they yeah. they paint it such a vocal leader but yeah and the idea like coach k is talking about how he used humor to sort of like break down that wall a little bit with kobe and bond and there's like there are actually some funny parts in the post credits or like i guess sprinkled in within the credits mm-hmm. like this behind the scenes stuff where lebron's making a he's making a funny joke about the i think he's uh, impersonating phil jackson yeah and the call like calling it philly or whatever and he's <laughs> like they keep trying to figure out what the hell that call always was what was the play but it was really just give it to go one on one and get the get hell out, the hell of, the out of the way that was great that was great uh yeah well did, jd did you have a favorite obviously the the plot of course of the doc is them after the 04 failures and how that team's put together and then even struggling a little bit in 06 of course, going on to win the gold medal, the the redemption of it all. But there's like a lot of subplots, I think, in this doc too. And I, I, I thought some of them. I wonder if you have a favorite. Was we get like the Wade angle, him coming back from injury, right? Which I had totally forgotten about. There's of course the part where Doug Collins and what happened at the '72 Olympics, where they're basically just completely robbed of their gold medal uh, from from USSR. There's that. There's a couple other ones. Do you have a favorite sort of subplot that they would? put in here yeah the doug collins thing was completely new to me i had no idea of the history in fact the my history of the americans in the olympics starts with the dream team like i basketball wasn't even on the radar Mm -hmm. before then um huh a subplot that i i well there was like kobe's insane popularity in china yeah i got a little bit about that we got um them you guys already addressed it like them actually living in the olympic village and like attending all the events and being hyped about phelps breaking all the records and stuff like that yeah i mean my favorite thing sitting next to jackson just seeing kobe diving for balls you know in that first practice and the work ethic and yeah me like i'm like see (laughs) <laughs> yep. and uh you know and mellow is basically saying well, i'm not getting up that early and uh, oh <laughs> how awesome. many championships do you have again Mello? oh, uh, oh of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, i'm just saying i mean no, like hey, 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 hey mellow they, half committed no. there's no doubt yeah That's it right. shows you the level these people yeah they're they're more committed than almost anyone at anything in their life but there's even levels right. at that level exactly what you're saying, exactly between like someone like kobe and mellow yeah yeah, so, you know, I have always had a soft spot for Kobe, Kobe uh, since we met him, Tess. Uh, he was very kind to us, and, uh, you know, was that around? That was, when did we meet him? Just a after few that, years I later. Yeah. A few years but later. I, but I thought that could be your your Nora Club Trist moment when you're watching <laughs> Kobe, you know, being hounded, touched by uh, fans. Oh, oh, totally. yeah. 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 We've witnessed that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Definitely. Been yeah. there. Been there. Uh, watch that happen. And people, were those people fainting? Were those games the Vegas games? Was that in Thomas and Mac? They were doing a lot of practice in Cox Pavilion. Yeah, yeah definitely sure. in Cox. But then there was the was it the Greece game? Whatever the tournament was, the FIBA tournament. That was I think ju- it was Thomas and Mac. Wasn't I think it? it was the FIBA Americas they yeah. did have in the in 07. At least some of the games were played there, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, and then and uh not to bring this all back to us, but they said they spent 35 days in Vegas. <laughs> I mean, we, yep. we cry about two weeks <laughs> in know, Vegas. I know, I thought that too. 35 straight days in Las Vegas. Yeah, My but did goodness. we ever go to Club Trist? I mean, I never did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we did But didn't. it is, it is, uh, it is uh, comforting, I guess, to see those players 
in the same sort of conference rooms that we end yeah, up totally. in Las yeah. Vegas. Same decor, same same getup. But I guess that's why I'm swearing right now too. Like uh, you know, I said MFers off the top. Uh, uh, the, the Kobe swearing, the LeBron swearing. Mike Shashevsky swore a lot. I know. That's how he riled up his guys. Yeah. I guess we got to do that in our previews to rile us up <laughs> for. Uh, the coming season. Yeah, he was a motivator. They kept saying uh, motivator. In term- <laughs> is that a? Th- I thought you word? said. I thought that's what you said on purpose. I don't know. Is that not a word? Motivator. I thought uh, you no, said. I didn't say it like that. <laughs> motivator. <Wow>. Um, <laughs> but I will say there was two parts that I thought were like questions I, I didn't think were answered in the doc, and I wrote them down. I thought there was two. One. After 04 and they get the bronze and LeBron's on the team and there's this whole like they, they do talk about very briefly like there's like the old guys in AI and Marbury and Duncan I guess they say and then there's of course the, the younger mm-hmm. uh, you know basically rooks they're like first or two, second year guys there in, in the three stars of this doc but he says after it I was never going to play for the national team again and I was curious like well what what made you change your mind like mm-hmm. was there a conversation with the Colangelo or Coach K was there conversation with waiter mellow was it just like time had passed and you're like well i want to go redeem myself you know they, yeah like we never got what it was that made that's fair lebron say all right well i'm going you want him to admit i need a gold medal yeah a little bit kind yeah. of a little I bit agree with you so there was that and, and, and uh, mellow sort of said the same thing i mean well he didn't say the same thing he didn't say i'm not coming back but he was asked what happened out there he said well i wasn't out there right right, right, uh, right yeah. so he didn't say i'm not coming back but yeah that's that's fair uh and then the other thing was Okay, so they're, they're, they're talking about Colangelo is in putting together a team. We're going to start with a coach. He talks about Dean Smith for a second. Then he's like, Dean Smith, I guess, tells him there's only one guy for this job. And it's Coach K. Uh, because he has, like, the respect of NBA players. And I was like, I wish, like, why? Because even LeBron in this doc says, fuck Duke. We hate everything about them. And they're like some, they were concerned about it. They were making it sound like. But it was like. It's a ballsy call when you really think about it. It's like, we're going to go with a college coach? Of course, he had all the success in the world at Duke, but it's like, why is it him? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the real... Tons of success in a military background. I think so, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then that idea of like, we need you for four years too. Yep. You know, the whole thing, the whole program. Yeah, nationally. definitely the program thing factors into it. Surely uh, Coach K's Nike deal factors into <laughs> sure. it as well. <laughs> sure. Um, the thing I would have liked to see more, you basically only got a line from Wade at some point where he's like, we spent so much time together in Las Vegas. That's where you see a lot of the relationships in the NBA started. And that's all they really mention about them plotting to get together on the Miami Heat in summer 2010. Right, right. Like, that's basically where all of uh, the super team stuff started was at the 2008 Olympics. These guys spending so much time together, getting used to playing alongside each other on the court. Obviously, you know, Wade and LeBron and Melo are close friends, Chris Paul as well. But I would have loved to have heard or of to have heard some of the like future plot yeah, in the NBA, yeah. but I can understand why they would keep that under wraps. Yeah, I kinda did like how they didn't really harp on the NBA player's success in the NBA. Like yeah. LeBron and Wade's success. Like they didn't mention that Way to come off a championship where he carried a team two years prior at all. Like I, I like how well, they, 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 they slightly out. slip it in because I think there was that cool shot of it's Wade, LeBron, and Melo. They're in Vegas. They're talking about, obviously, uh, bonding as a team and stuff like that. And then Wade makes the joke that he's the sexiest of the three yeah. and that these guys are my bodyguard. And then yeah. LeBron says, oh, man, I wish you had – instead of saying that, I wish you had just, like, rubbed it in that you have a ring. I thought that was like uh, – like, yeah. so you have to know, of course, um, but – but yeah, but you're right. They don't beat you on the head over their success. Yeah, not at they, all. They did. Uh, but it's totally true. It's exactly what I was thinking. Trey, watching it, these guys, Bosch, Wade, and LeBron are are just. LeBron actually was sitting in one of those meetings, pre meetings with Shashevsky, trying to get them motivated. And he said, "You know, there's there's no more excuses yeah, here." I love that. Part. I, I I want Chris Paul as my point guard yeah. when I'm in the NBA. Well, now I got him. Uh, so, yeah, it was a little bit of a dig at Sasha Pavlovich and, you know, <laughs> Delonte West and, and Zadrunas Ogaskis because that was just him coming off. But I totally forgot, even Wade, they were a 15 and 67 team with the Miami yeah. Heat that year, and he played most of the season. 
Yeah. Bosch made sure to point games? that out. Yeah. He's like, yeah, they sucked for like a year or two. Bosch was great. Yeah, Bosch, he was good. Bosch was funny. <laughs> he was the best comic relief. When he was doing his impression of meeting Kobe Bryant, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the most serious guy of all time. <laughs> Kobe comes in, I'm tired of watching y'all lose. You can uh, totally imagine Kobe saying that to the people when he first meets him. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. I guess I... I had never thought about that as Kobe's first Olympics. Yeah, yeah I went and Isn't checked. Isn't that weird? As I was watching, I went and checked. Yeah. yeah he, he committed. He was in 07 as part of this new you know, program. Yeah. And uh, winning. And then, yeah, year 12 for him yeah. was his first yeah. Olympic. He could have been part of 04. But there was, yeah, yeah. you know, the rape allegation yeah. happening then. Uh, so that was part of it. They quickly skimmed over all those guys dropping out of the 04 team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Carter, Garnett, McGrady, Ray Allen, Jason Kidd, um, Shaq. Shaq, Jermaine O'Neal, Ben Wallace, and then Kobe. Yeah. Nine guys. Um, what were things that you maybe disliked, JD, uh, if there are any about the documentary? Uh, I hated the mix on this, and I know I'm <laughs> standing alone. Yelling at a cloud. Oh, okay. So what do you mean? Go, go. I, like, I, I couldn't understand a word they were saying in the first half of this movie. I had to, I submitted and I put on my subtitles. When I have to get off my couch and go, are this, are the settings on my TV incorrect here? Like, do I have a weird setting here? Is this, is this maybe an, because we got, Hey guys, we got screeners. Yeah. That's pretty cool. hey, that was hey, fun. Hey. Uh, is this like an unmixed version of the, mm. like, uh, like a rough mix, but, uh, I love the mu music edit. Uh, I thought the pacing of the whole doc was great, but couldn't hear it. And it could have just been me, but, uh, did you guys have that problem or no? Well, I have to admit I had the, uh, the yeah. captions on. Yeah. They, they were on, they were on from the jump. I think they were already on, on my Netflix right, account, but right. so I didn't notice this as much, I guess, but. You were adamant about that. I can't hear. I can't hear what they're saying. Could not hear a thing. Mm. Yeah, mm. but uh, did anyone else have that? The problem? music was too loud. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, That's the yeah, mix. it was loud. It, <laughs> it was loud. It was loud. Yeah, I bet LeBron mixed it on Beats headphones. <laughs> so it sounds strange when it comes out of your tongue. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, any other random thoughts on this, or things that you disliked, or whatever, wherever you want to go? Um, well, on LeBron. He put his headband on pregame in a mirror. And I think that's, that is a, a secret of LeBron that no one has ever uncovered. He would look at a mirror to put his headband on to make sure it was in the proper Perfect. spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because listen. Good point. Listen. Uh, yeah, the follicles were not coming in for LeBron for a long time. He, he obviously saw a receding hairline. It's been a LeBron joke forever. And then at one point, he just decided to to toss the headband. He didn't need to wear it anymore. He was comfortable with the hairline. But he had to put it. You could see him looking in a mirror to put his headband hmm. on. I didn't catch that. What like, a catch. That, that's got to be, you know, one of those, like, those hyper analyzed videos somewhere on <laughs> on youtube in a deep dark corner about lebron he was looking in a mirror to see he put it on the right spot in the right spot to uh to put the headband away it was weird seeing lebron do the the powder toss yeah. in beijing yeah yeah uh, making sure, I guess, that was on the uh, There the are going to be stable. a lot of memes, I feel like, or screenshots <laughs> from this documentary on Twitter, right? Like, because uh, of... I'm ready to toss one off for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you got a good one? What's your oh, favorite? Oh, yeah. After the 04 Olympics, there's a, a news segment. Oh, I know what you're going to get. Yeah, go on. <laughs> they used to call them the Dream Team. <laughs> Now, some people are calling them the cream team. <laughs> it's that woman with that guy. It's oh, yeah. Clip. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I screenshot that one right away. Only yep. to see my screener thing at the top, so I'll have to wait for the official yep. release. But uh, <laughs> you'll be seeing the cream team popping up, no doubt. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't get it either. <laughs> I guess they, 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 yeah. they, got, they got beat pretty they got bad. Creamed? Yeah, they lost by yeah. 20. Oh, to they, the, got uh, they got creamed. They did get hammered in that the game. Creamed. It's a it's a stretch. I, uh, that the doesn't really team. work. <laughs> the creamed team. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. But the not, cream rises yeah. to the top. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at that clip, oh, too. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> but then they like go back to those two, and they're like, hey, lots of time to turn it they around. Can still win it. They can still win the gold. They can still win it. Conceivably win the gold. I didn't know that there were rap lyrics being written about Team USA that Jada yeah, Kiss, that Kiss bar. I never heard that before I had neither why Team USA keep getting their asses blown out <laughs> never heard that before yeah. is that a popular Jada Kiss song uh, that's one of his biggest songs so. why is what? it it's in there know that. it's, it's called lyric. Why of course you know this song wow it was big time wow, wow. Yeah, they only yeah, they didn't it. give us like uh, didn't give us the chorus or anything they didn't yeah. get the rights I guess they just gave us that line uh, how did you feel about Athens being described as a convenient intersection in a bad neighborhood 
Wow, I think that was the entire city. Yeah, I think that was Brian Williams that may have said that. <laughs> it was well, that was that was because it's surrounded by the Middle East, right? I mean, that was the Is, whole. That's what the oh. That's I, what I took from it. Oh, I guess it's like I hadn't a, thought of that. It's that's where we're going, but we got Iraq. We're in and the Iran, middle, and right? The, wow, all the, all the security concerns and. Uh, Did you feel safe when you were in Greece at the O four Olympics? God, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm I not felt... a security expert, but a cruise ship. That seems like mm. a very easy target. You know what I mean? Like, fair. What, I wonder what the, yeah. the thinking there was. But anyway, it's very probably easy just to more. See. To, I would assume easier to control people going on and off. Fair it, enough. I think is the, yeah, that's fair. But you're right. Fair. You, know, you know where they all are. Right. I guess if they're on the cruise ship. Uh, it's the Y remix by Jada. Oh, the remix. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not go. the original, remix. but awesome. I guess they added that in. Uh, I did like. Just to throw out random notes now. Love the two guys arguing about Kobe and LeBron. Oh, yeah. uh, so there was a couple clips of other people, like people <laughs> chiming in, like who's the who's the best at this time? And it was a conversation, of course. The one guy going back to the guy, the guy first off saying that who leads the league in points, rebounds, assists, steals. steals. I think he says. Steals. And then the other guy says. Google most valuable player. <laughs> Great retort from that guy. Those guys went on to start Twitter, actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they were Crazy fired up. They're ahead uh, of their time. I love the clip of when they're talking about Kobe setting the um, just the, the vibe of practices, and he's really like focusing on defense. He is locking OJ Mayo in that one clip. It's OJ the, Mayo. I think wow. it's OJ Mayo because remember they had like select teams or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. lots of those. Guys. Yeah, like you see a Kirk Heinrich at one point in this and stuff. Yeah, I spotted Luther Head at one point. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, oh. there's he Kobe. Like, you can see Dan Tony in the background, literally laughing and smiling because mm -hmm. I think the idea of the 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 whatever the the drill is for OJ Mayo to get around Kobe. Kobe steals the ball from him, just gives it back to him so many times, and goes again, and he like. Four times, O.J. Mayo barely moves within one foot. It's, Even uh, O.J. Mayo's laughing. Yeah. He threw it, too. And it's just every time he touches it, Kobe's knocking it away <clears throat> right away. That was awesome. Uh, the one, the couple of things I would have liked to see a little bit more of, um, the breakfast club, when they're all getting together for the yeah. early stuff. You're seeing them in the gym, but I don't know. I could have done with more of that to see how intense these workouts are. Sure. And when Coach K is explaining how they need to start playing the international game, he just keeps saying, we needed to play their game. We needed to yeah. learn their game. What's that mean? Yeah. Exactly. Wade, you know, I Wade think you probably get through... bogged down in details, but if you're a sicko, you want to know. Yeah, Wade runs through, like, some differences in the two games because they talk about the ball being different. They talk about, like, you can take the ball off the rim. And then there's a cool clip. I think it's Boozer and Bosch talking about how you can sort of, like, a defender can just get in the way of you yeah. in international play, and like that would be called uh, illegally in the NBA. That's mm -hmm. that, like I would have loved mm -hmm. more of that too, because they do just keep saying it. We, we had, had to learn their game. We had to learn, learn their I game. Think, How did you learn it? I think the other big difference is don't travel. We like traveling in the NBA, but <laughs> that, you know, that could have been good too. Yeah, the, yeah. The Spain. Spain was up in arms during that game. They didn't show it during this doc, but they were up in arms about guys getting it in yeah. the backcourt and just walking because it, they would be called for it. But I I think that, yeah, they, they got through it really quickly. I would have liked a little bit more Jorge Garbajosa in that game. Of uh, course. He was on the bench just yeah. chilling. He didn't a play a lot, but young Ricky. That oh, play. Young at, Ricky. Young Ricky. That play at the, and Juan Carlos Navarro, fun to watch always. Yeah. The uh, floaters. The floaters. Yeah. But the play where Wade saves the ball going out of bounds and Throws an alley oop yeah, while he's Kobe. yeah that's forgot sick. That. What a play! Yeah. What a play! An alley oop while he's going out of bounds. Amazing. Uh, no one seemed happier, I thought, when they won the gold medal than Michael Red. Yeah. <laughs> he was going nuts. He jumped on Dwight. <laughs> he jumped on Dwight. Uh, there's a couple other things where he's going crazy. Like they're all celebrating, of course, but he is on next level. And then I looked it up because he brought up the Kobe celebrating a birthday on the 23rd. Michael Red's birthday is on the 24th. He won the gold medal on his birthday. No wonder he's so excited. Yeah, what because, a gift. Uh, that game being played that's on the 24th there. Yeah. So maybe that's why he was pumped. <laughs> I yeah, was like, probably, I sure. Why is Michael Ryan just going crazy? <laughs> but he, uh, it was his birthday. He knew they were going to celebrate. <laughs> LeBron wanted to know where the bottles were. When he was oh, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> they didn't seem to where be the there bottle. either. <laughs> it didn't seem like they yeah. found them. Yeah. They didn't find them. Uh, just had a Team USA flag taped to the wall in the locker yeah. room. That's yeah. really funny to me. <laughs> yeah. I love seeing all of, I mean, we basically watched from 2004 to 2008 seeing these players yeah. right and you can just see the way their clothing changes and their looks change like when they're sitting outside for that scene when wade's saying he's the handsomest guy gigantic shirts Huge. and shorts Huge. like you can't see a kneecap no <laughs> chance on that one i loved uh seeing uh 
like a close up of Marc Gasol's feathered hair. Yeah. 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 At one point, there's uh, like Argentina jerseys that look like tie dyed waves up top. There was some wild stuff in the early 2000s. Yeah. yeah. Even the jerseys from the 04 team that get the bronze no. to the 08 team. <laughs> They like shrink yes, <laughs> significantly. Yes. Yeah, Dwight was loving it, <laughs> <laughs> showing off those guns. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the only other note I have that I thought was a really cool part, and you know, so Coach K is like bringing in all these people to motivate the team and like uh, really leaning into the military aspect and doing this for your country and, and that. And you get that part where they bring in, I believe his name was Captain Smiley, and uh, the the um, soldier that lost like both of his eyes from shrapnel, but was still like an active duty officer. He was yeah. apparently the army's first blind active duty officer. <laughs> so they're, they're there in the room, but then there's that part like Wade's talking to him. That's pretty cool. That like he's really mic'd cool. up and he's like, I think it's just a practice. Right. But he's like, oh, it looks we... like he had just come out and he's like breaking down the practice. Yeah, that was, that was really, that cool. was really, really cool moment. But, that's all the notes I have. I love this damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've already watched it twice. <laughs> I was happy to see Wade get a lot of shine in this one, yeah. actually. Obviously, he's a producer yeah. on it, but like, I think he kind of goes unremembered from this team because you're so much focused on LeBron and Kobe as two of the, yep. you know, all-time 10 most famous players, if not the 10 best players, depending on your opinions. But like hearing him say about himself, like, we were the three best players in the league. I was like, oh. He was coming off an injury, so maybe not, but that was definitely Wade putting himself back on the map. And when he goes crazy in that uh, gold medal game, yeah. I remember thinking at the time, like, this is the most athletic guy in the league, and he's just flying all over the court. I thought it was cool how they compared him to Michael Jordan showing up with a bald head wearing number nine. Yeah, I thought there were just so many echoes of Michael Jordan and the Dream Team in the past. Like, the way Kobe blasts through Pow, and the way that Kobe and Wade are d up uh, Manu Ginobili and like take that personally those are like Michael Jordan moves totally. to me so much MJ and Scotty against Tony Kukoc is what sprung to mind yep. right away for both of those moments and you're like that's these guys realizing I can have that moment going forward from here and I thought that was really that's, cool that's well said we, hey, we were part of the media in 2008. Were we saying Ginobili was uh, the best shooting guard in the world? I don't think we were. I think they were, like, trying to fabricate that like a Jordan would do. Stretch the truth a little bit. They call him the poo guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. He's got his own T-shirt. I mean, we loved Ginobili. I don't remember well, saying he was no, better than Wade. No, it was Shashevsky manufacturing yeah, things because it. on Wade's chair— it was the 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 scouting report was the second best shooting guard <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the NBA is yeah. coming for yeah, you. Yeah, Ginobili. Yeah, second <laughs> second to Kobe. Yeah, but on Kobe's chair it was the best. Shooting yeah, guard, yeah, right. So, so you're just yeah, finding tailored. those hot takes. I guess yeah. they existed in 08. <laughs> yeah, tailored ta tailored lines for each of those guys. That made sense. But uh, it yeah it propelled Wade to another level. I know Wade coming off a championship two years prior, but that year 08 09 was the year that Wade took over the NBA where he was oh, great. The, the yeah, he was like a point. top three MVP candidate. Yeah, I think exactly. He led the league in scoring 30 points per game. That helped him, uh, but he fought back. The The injury f footage was good. It was good to get the... Uh, I had forgotten about yeah, that. Yeah, coming the back. The shoulder injury, and mm -hmm. then he also said he got knee, like, uh, knee surgery as well at the same time, basically. Yeah, and he would have been a different player if the... Uh, the science when he had his injury in Marquette was different. He said that before it, it, he would have had a different career. His athleticism was shortened because of that, uh, but he came back, uh, yeah, obviously an incredible player and took over in, in 2009. And the 18 points in the final in the first half off the bench was huge yeah. uh, because everybody else was kind of struggling. So he was, he was, oh, Kobe and, and LeBron were in foul, foul trouble. trouble yeah. Right. And I'm looking at the basketball reference page for the 0708 NBA season. Kobe, first team All NBA. The only other shooting guard who made an All NBA team, Manu Ginobili, wow. made third team. All right. Tracy McGrady, also third team. You could maybe consider him a shooting guard, but yep. all the other guards are point guards. So I <laughs> okay. guess I got it right. Okay. Hey, look, yeah. and we love Ginobili. I just, uh, I don't remember us getting that into. Yeah, he's the Wade best also didn't best. play a ton that season. Yeah, so. that's yeah, probably, that was a part of it. That makes but, sense. But you know, man, it was hot. Yeah, was yeah. Hot. You know, you could have could have been a Finals MVP. You know. Yep, that's so. a good point. Um, my final note. I lied. I did write down. Why didn't we ask Dwight Howard and Carlos Boozer why they weren't wearing their white hats at the opening ceremony? <laughs> <laughs> They're the only two. Mm. Took off their uh, those like little page boy caps or whatever yeah. those are. <laughs> I just don't think they were feeling how they, they didn't like it. No, no, they they must have not. Uh, I don't know. This is pure <laughs> conjecture here, but I'm guessing that Dwight Howard's head and Carlos Boozer's head 
are a lot bigger, like physically bigger oh. than like Kobe's head or Melo's head. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they just didn't fit good. I don't know. Oh, that's a no. great point. No, they would have custom made it. They yeah, custom, custom hat. Made. You're probably right. Listen, Ralph custom. Lauren is going to just just give them <laughs> a large, a, an large? ill-fitting hat? I don't uh, think so. Okay. These are the biggest stars in that parade. Point, but you're maybe no, you're no longer like a star when you're on Team USA. You're just one of the team. Yeah, okay? uh, yeah that's right. why I was upset. Get your hats on. As ugly as they are. I thought I thought a bigger question was for Trey because he's been doing the hang loose. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kobe. Oh, yeah. Kobe That's was, in my notes. Kobe was dropping it to everybody. Why, Kobe? Yeah. He must have went to Hawaii earlier that summer. You come back, you can't stop doing it, man. I do it to people like when they let me in on the road here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I also liked how Mello was wearing his cap at the opening ceremonies. Everybody else, you know, just like basic straight wearing uh, their flat caps or whatever. Mello's off to the oh, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah, putting a little flavor on it. Mello had a cool look through this entire oh, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. He is, yeah. He is cool. Uh, anything else? Uh, I do have some trivia I want to throw at you guys a little bit later here. We'll take a break. But any other final thoughts on the Redeem Team documentary? Anybody? Or have we covered it all? I felt like we've gone through the entire well, time. Well, let's give a little love here to the Spain team. Those were fun teams Amazing to watch, too. We teams. mentioned Navarro had awesome floaters. Rudy Fernandez. Oh, that dunk. dunk on Dwight. Oh, I don't know how that had slipped my mind because that was massive yeah. at the time. And he was balling. Um, I love watching the guys who dominate in FIBA tournaments and then are good players in the NBA. But you see them go to another level. That was definitely Rudy Fernandez in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You forget about how the his peak, peak Rudy. We talked to Brent Barry about uh, he was the guy that he was running around trying to get around screens, and that was the moment he realized, like, oh, I can't chase it around. Rudy right. Fernandez, I better retire. But Rudy's so good that he was doing it in Eurobasket this summer. He was, you know, at the end of his career, but he was balling. Mm-hmm. But there's so many. You know, Marcus Ole was kind of looked over in this uh, because he wasn't a huge part of the team, but they're so deep. Yeah. They're so deep. They're so good. And they did, just to like come full circle, they did do an awesome job. For a game that wasn't like decided at the buzzer beater, I thought they did a cool uh, job of making it seem like it. Because it was a very competitive game. And like the pressure was starting job. to get to them. And Bosch is talking about it. And LeBron sort of talking about it. And it's like they wouldn't go away. Because like usually we hammer these teams. Because, you know, we get them down and then we run away. And we're just like, they just kept coming back. And if you remember that game, they literally did. It was like... Five times you thought the game was over. over. It was like, oh, this one's a wrap. This one's a wrap. This one's a wrap. And they kept keeping it close enough. And Kobe started hitting clutch shots at the end and setting guys up. And Chris, uh, Chris Paul set up Brad Miller in one of those scrimmages. <laughs> yes, he did. Brad Miller was there. Oh, Brad, Brad, was Brad. Like Brad, you're right. Uh, I was like, which Brad? Brad. I, know, I was like, Brad, Brad. Beal? Like, he's not there yet. But, but oh. some some good cameos from NBA players just in the, you know, the – whether it's the conference rooms or on the floor, like Gilbert Arenas was hanging out, mm. Joe Johnson was hanging Joe out. Joe Johnson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Young Kevin Durant. Like, yeah, oh, there's yeah. a shot of Rookie him. season, yep. heading into his rookie season. He was there for the 07 camp. That was cool to see. Yeah. Young young Rick Kamla? <laughs> 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 young style. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. All right, let's take a break. As you can tell, we love this uh, documentary. But when we come back, I'm going to test these guys' knowledge of the 2008 Summer Olympics. Don't go anywhere. So I was sitting around with my new softball teammates. We were just chatting, you know, small talk, small talk, small talk. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Came up that I do a podcast. I'm in the sports realm. One guy perked up, got on the edge of his seat. It's like, okay. So who's the best sports media personality out there? I said, it's Stephen A. Smith. Okay. You have to respect him, love him, hate him. He is the creme of the creme. And this was before we received this ad copy about Stephen A's new podcast. I swear on my beer league softball career. That is true. And I don't know how he does it, but Stephen A is adding another show to his schedule. And it sounds very good. His new podcast is called No Mercy. That's K-N-O-W Mercy. Three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'll hear Stephen A's unfiltered opinions on trending topics, front page news, and current events, as well as conversations with influential celebrities and thought leaders at the forefront of culture. He's got connections. And if there was something missing from Stephen A's portfolio, I think it's this. Oh, absolutely right. You're you're totally right. I know you would never lie to your softball teammates. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, the cream of the crop. Yes. Uh, exactly right. And now he's going to be the pot of the cast, it sounds like, <laughs> because you turn on the mics, you turn on the camera, doesn't matter what Who's he's talking better? about or who he's talking to, it's going to be gold. It will be gold. Uh, 
a podcast where he can be even more open and transparent. No Mercy sounds good. Listen to No Mercy, a presentation of Cadence 13 and Odyssey Studio, available now on the Odyssey app and anywhere you listen to your podcasts. All right, back in the Classic Factory, reviewing the 2022 sports documentary on Netflix called The Redeem Team. Big fans over here. Let's hear from all of you in the comments and tweet at us at No Dunks Inc. Things you liked about it, things you disliked, what were your thoughts? But I do have some trivia for you guys. Let's do it. Yo! Redeem Team trivia. Okay, I just whipped these together early this morning. <laughs> I don't think they're that crazy. You guys seem to know your stuff when it comes to this. But I've got uh, five questions, maybe a bonus question at the end. First one, though, guys. Who is the oldest player on the Redeem team? You can talk it out if you want until you lock in your final answer. Can't be anybody drafted before 1996. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Yeah, so he turned 30. Was there um, what? what did you say Michael Red turned? I, I, it was I didn't birthday. say I didn't it was say his birthday, but how old was he? Oh, you didn't say his age. No, Michael Red's just sort of an old soul. It feels like he was always old. You're you're correct in Kobe turning thirty, but I'm gonna tell you right now that's that is not, not the right answer. You're forgetting a guy on this team. Well, I mean, the end of the band, there's a Tayshawn Prince. No, he played uh, for a while. I think it's Red. It's Boozer was drafted way later. Jason Kidd. Ah, Jason. Yeah, Jason Kidd. Don't yeah. forget. Ninety-three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ninety-four. What was he drafted? Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Well, I got a stat. I got a stat for yeah. you. Can, okay, is go there ahead. Another, is there another question about Jason Kidd shooting during the <laughs> Olympics? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have that. So go ahead. Well, here's a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, the, this the guy's two, turning the yeah. trivia on me. The 2008 Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The American team played eight games. Jason Kidd started all eight. Oh. How many shots did Jason Kidd take? It's uh, it's not a ton. No. It's, he, it's, In eight games, he started all eight games. Like six? He shot six for seven. Okay. Not yeah, bad. Wow. wow six for seven. He took seven shots in eight games. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and they even there showed wasn't much one. There wasn't Jason Kidd in the, no. in the back. No. Yeah, but they shot an make. interview with him, and he had yeah. a couple lines. Yeah. Okay, so Kidd was 35 years old on the Redeem Forgot team. And then Kobe turned 30. So the only two guys over 30. All right, next one here. This is about shooting. Um, who led Team USA in total three-pointers made during the 08 Olympics? So during the eight games. Scott, total three-pointers made. It's got to be Mello. That was my first inclination as well. Catch and shoot Mello. FIBA Mello. Olympics Mello. Hoodie Mello. Uh, I mean, uh, could it be Michael Red? That's why he's so excited. No. <laughs> it wasn't Michael Red. It um, wasn't. I'm in on Mello. Yeah, I'm going Mello. Keeping it's, it simple. That's uh, incorrect. Oh, that's why I asked it. What a I, th- I thought you it's for sure obvious. would say that. Yeah. Too obvious. So it's, who is it? it's um it's Kobe. Wow. Total three pointers made. Yeah. Good. So Kobe shot 17 of 53 from deep. So not great. <laughs> it's like 32%. Yeah, okay. But he hit the most. There's a lot of guys like that are just sort of below that. Melo being one of them. Tayshawn Prince though, the best three point percentage in the run. Six of 11 from distance. 54.5%. So way to go, Prince. <laughs> Tayshaun, I always forget he's on this yeah. game, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who are the three assistant coaches <laughs> for Team USA's 2008 Summer Olympics roster? You want us to name? Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris Collins was one. No, no, he's he a scout. scout. He's actually a scout. He doesn't count. So okay. Mike D'Antoni. D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni is one. Oh, I uh, thought you guys were going to rip through Nate this. Nate McMillan? Oh, that's number two. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a hint. It's not an NBA coach. Not an NBA coach. Jim Behar. Yeah, well done, gentlemen. Well done. There you go. Now you can picture it, right? You yep. can see it. Okay. Yep. Okay. I like this one. Which non-American led the 2008 Olympics in scoring with 19.6 points per game? And if, so, I'll t- in fact, I'll tell you, Wade was the uh, American scorer, like high American scorer, at like something like 16, and he was so he was like pretty far down on the list. If you can get the top three, it would be pretty cool. But I'm looking for number one overall. It feels like we've named him. You have, you've talked about him. We've talked about him in the uh, talking about the Redeem Team talk. His name has come up. You don't. He need... has three names. No. Juan Carlos Navarro. No. Oh, no. 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 Luis surprised. Scola. No. He's third. Eighteen point nine points per game. Talk so it's about not it. a Spaniard because it's not. It wasn't. Pa, 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 Rudy Fernandez. Pau Gasol. It's Pau Gasol. Pau. You don't need to. Yeah. You don't need to overthink it. Nineteen point six points per game. Pau Gasol. Second. You haven't. No one has said this guy. His team was probably playing in the Olympics because of where it is. 
and he had 19 points per Yao. game. Yao. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it went Pau, Yao, and then uh, Scola. <laughs> Pau, Yao, Scola. Pau, Yao. <laughs> uh, this, this I thought might be the toughest question, Oof. but maybe you guys will remember. Uh, where I believe a lot of this footage was coming from, what was the name of the ESPN program that followed Team USA's preparations for <laughs> Beijing? <laughs> I, I thought Trey I White. I know, man. Yeah. Oh, it's a... Uh, uh, I don't want to give you too much. Okay, it's three It's three words. Okay. <laughs> Juan Carlos Navarro. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, well, JD, what else can uh, I give? Dream oh, maybe to redeem. Oh, okay, so it has has sort of the, uh, a version of redeem in it. The redemption story. So it's redeem got re- in the team. It's got redemption <laughs> as the third word. It's something, something redemption. Looking for redemption. You no, know, you're like searching for redemption. Trying for. No, what would you be? What would you be on towards redemption? Oh, journey? the road to redemption. Road to redemption. <laughs> yeah, that was the ESPN program. Nice. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. These were tougher than I thought. Road to yeah. perdition. I Final one. That. Final one. This is a bonus question. We can't throw it up on the lower third because it would, of course, Too give obvious. it away. I need you guys uh, to spell Shashevsky. Oh. oh, this is all you, Trey. <laughs> Can you spell Coach K's last name? Because I couldn't. I think it's K. Correct. R, right? Correct. Y. Z. Z, Z. So K R K R Z Y Z E W S K Y I. I at the end. Correct. Well done. Well done, guys. K R Z Y Z E W S K I. I believe a Polish name. I think. I think you're right. A Chicago guy. I don't know why. That was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> I wish I had more questions. Uh, we went me a little, too. A little quicker than I thought we were going to. There. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got your eye on? I, I don't know. I'm trying to see if I can come up with a random question from my notes. <laughs> what was, what pa- was the name? What was the name of the jackets they wore on the podium? Team USA. The name of the jackets? They're, they're a Nike jacket that you could buy to this very day. It's got like the angular. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know how to name uh, like a like a windbreaker type. Oh, very close. This would be more for you if you were doing a marathon, also out in the wind. Uh, oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, see, I thought instead of windbreaker, I thought it was gonna be win w i n breaker. That would have been smart. Wind stream. Wind runner. Nike's uh, wind, wind runner, runner jacket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I know what you're talking. Those were nice. <laughs> Those were nice. That was a nice look for sure. Uh, oh, I I loved JD. What were your thoughts on the graphics? I loved the graphic package of this documentary. I know that sounds I, insane. I did too. Um, I love it. A little impacty the the font, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I was fine with it. So I was like, so basically it would be yeah, it was impact like, but yeah. it would be like um, if it was this, it would be like. USA and then the score one would just be the outline right, right? they would do like filled in and then the outline yeah. sort of ran with that and I was like oh that's sort of a cool decision like that's nice and then I was like oh yeah on the back of the jerseys in 08 it was just the outline of their name mm-hmm. and I was like maybe that's, that's the tie-in <laughs> yeah so there you go for all you font sickos <laughs> I thought they the font heads uh, <laughs> let's take one more break and when we come back we'll wrap up this bad boy any final thoughts and I guess give it a grade so don't go anywhere Have you been waiting until fall to really start dressing? Then you're in luck, because it's fall, and Indochino's bringing the heat with their fall collection, featuring new colors and premium fabrics. Now that it's fall, you can wear your Indochino to the mall or to the ball. You can shop their made-for-you suits, starting at just $449, or you can peep their custom-fitted shirts, casual wear, outerwear, and more. Indochino even lets you make any suit a tuxedo. If you're really in a fancy mood, I didn't understand how this works, so I went on the website, and there's literally a button on every suit's page that just says, make it a tuxedo. And you'll never guess what it does. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Click it, boom, you got a tuxedo. You thought you were looking at a suit? Not anymore, sucker. (laughs) You can design your perfect suit or tuxedo with Indochino. To get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more, use promo code NODUNKS at Indochino.com. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com. Promo code no dunks. Okay, final thoughts for the Rateem Deem. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rateem Deem. <laughs> yeah, this is your road to redemption. You can do it. We used to know a guy in, uh, in high school named Dean. And we'd always, me and my buddy Dub would always say, shut up, Dean. I don't know why we love saying that. We always say it under our breath. No matter what he said. 
Shut up, Dean. <laughs> That's something fun about it. <laughs> you <think> watching? <laughs> no, I don't think you like the basketball. Dean team. Uh, yeah. The Redeem Team documentary. Final thoughts, JD, and give me a grade. A B plus. I'm going to be giving it a B plus. Okay. It would, it, I would give it an A if the mix was better. Okay. And again, hit me up on Twitter and, and see if you had a similar experience because I, I want to know. Like, it just, it really does drive me crazy. Ah. Like, yeah, the music, it's great. It's a driving, moves the story along. It's awesome. But I need to hear what Dwayne Wade is saying. Okay, okay. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Was there too much music as well, JD? I felt like... I, you know what? I'm a guy who likes to put a lot of music uh, in stuff. I've noticed. Yes. That's, you know, but our stuff is maximum 10 minutes long. If it's yeah. a feature length, you can let it just, yeah. Yeah. you know what? Let Let LeBron swear. The, LeBron saying fuck is more than enough believe me uh, but I thoroughly enjoy this movie uh, again watch it with uh, Rachel and Jackson who is a, a budding basketball player I thought he found it quite inspiring and to cool. get him to sit through a, a, a doc is uh, it's a lot sometimes <laughs> so um, I think fans of this show who are into basketball and that's most of you I think you'll really really enjoy yeah. this yeah it would have been cool if just the uh, Marvin Gaye Star Spangled Banner was playing throughout the entire <laughs> documentary, just on on repeat. That was cool. Did they? It made it. It looked like they kept it playing through the practice. Yes. Like when they were shooting around, but I mm. couldn't tell if that was just them like putting the scene into the TV in the background, or were they just like so inspired? They're like, we gotta go shoot around. I this. thought this. I, <laughs> I, I thought the exact same thing. Trey was like, wow. What a, if if the director and producers of this doc decided like, yeah, let's. CGI it into yeah. the background of the TV. That's like that's almost weirder than it just playing throughout practice, yeah. right? So I don't know the answer. Well, maybe it ended. They're like, out. run it back, coach. We're gonna get some shots up. Yeah, they seem to be into it. Um, okay, so a, a B plus from JD. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, really liking it. Trey, you go next. What do you think? I'll give it an A minus, a nine out of ten, and a gold medal. <laughs> I think it's nearly perfect. Yep. Uh, the only thing missing for me is Kobe. They did a great job considering the circumstances, but man, it would have taken it to the next level, getting to yeah. actually hear from Kobe about this legendary experience that him and the rest of the team went through. Sort of wild that they had an interview with Kobe, I guess, from 2015 mm -hmm. in talking about it a little bit, but uh, yeah, I, I hear your concerns. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. he's just such a major part yeah. of the story, and this is such a big part of his basketball career as well that it would have been so cool to hear from him in his own words. And we got to hear a lot of him in his own words, but, you know, getting together with the guys and chatting about it. Who knows what else we would have found out. But uh, I loved it. It's, like we said, such a throwback. Yeah. If you watched this game, if you watched Team USA through the early 2000s, it's essential. you got to see it. Uh, it adds color to the entire story, the, the storytelling of it, the narratives of running into the same teams over and over after a period of dominance I think is really cool. Like, it can be very easy for a documentary to feel disjointed, like having to get this scene in and this scene yeah. in and this scene in. I thought this flowed so nicely. It could have been two and a half hours, and I would have been thrilled the entire time. This was great. Tess? I'm with you. A minus. I, I think uh, the way that Kobe was depicted was great because I always, we always experience teams talking about um, guys like me the media will blow up a story like oh Kobe was the centerpiece obviously he was as far as the, the team play but then to hear it from those guys to hear it internally felt great mm -hmm. it felt great it, it just it, it confirmed what we all felt that this was Kobe's uh, gold medal and he was the leader of this team and obviously it would have been great to hear more Kobe but it was also you, you mentioned the one that was pep the interview was 2015 I think so I think they put that up um, the but then hearing him in 08 and how he changed and and then even you know closer to his death uh, it, it's just those the interviews you can see how Kobe's grown grew up uh, and changed throughout that so that I, I you know I, I like I love the whole the Kobe arc uh, in this thing I would have liked a little more Greece as I said a little bit more about the other countries but this wasn't about the other countries I suppose so it didn't yeah. really matter I, I think they did a good job again of not uh not giving us too much like these dudes are amazing NBA players and they're just going to run roughshod over the other uh, the other countries. There was a respect there. And, and I and I liked I liked how 
how it happened, other than Mike Krzyzewski maybe not respecting the Greek team in uh, uh, 2006. Well, D- Dwayne Wade in the doc says, uh, he gives some praise to Greece. He says, they're running high pick and roll. They're running our game. They <laughs> beat us at our own yeah. game. Yeah, and then Bosch is like, I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just stop it? Well, that's easier said than done when you're out there. He says something. Like that. Yeah, so I mean, there's, a, there's a doc to be made about big Sofo. Sofo sure. plays scores sure. any of these. There's a story there. Baby Shaq, Giannis before he was Giannis, people say. Uh, so, you know, you got to be careful. There, there's a, some Victor Wemba and Yama Yanis comparisons happen and now you gotta be careful with those uh, you don't want to do that Sofa was not Yanis before he no. wasn't Baby Shaq but there's a doc to be made for okay. sure uh, I absolutely love this doc 10 out of 10 A plus gold medal we'll watch again <laughs> wait already did watch again uh, so I'm a huge fan I, like I said like this is made for someone really like us uh, both the time frame and just what it's about and the Olympic factor which I am a, a sucker for like I'm I'm like I'm tearing up. I'm not even American, and I'm tearing up at uh, the redemption arc. Like, we, like when you step back and go, okay, relax. Like you still have the greatest players in the world, and it's like we have overcome the team. impossible. This team, the Argentinians, they've known each other since they were 18 years old. They're brothers and stuff. Like, like on one hand, I roll my eyes, like okay, but you're better basketball players. But the beauty about basketball is like there's some truth to it. It's like. You can have a one up on a team if you've just got the chemistry and that you've played like a decade or plus. I mean, there is something to it than just like better players being thrown on a team and saying, okay, go win it. Like, that's, you know, it used to be the case and now it's not. And I think that is cool. It's not tennis. It's not tennis, Pepe. Do you think uh, doubles tennis players say <laughs> when, when they have great chemistry and they beat another team, they say, it's not single. Well, yeah, you know? probably, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. probably. We need each just. other out there. So, uh, yeah, we genuinely love this doc. Uh, highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. Hopefully a lot of you watched it on Netflix before listening or watching this uh, show. But, uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and tweet them in at no dunks, Inc. That's I-N-C on the end. Let's get ready for the NBA season, though. Next week, I set it off the top. Monday through Friday are burning questions when it comes to season previews. For the 2022-23 season, we'll be going all week long live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Can't wait for that. A bunch of other shows, of course. You know, there's no bunts and there's no breaks and there's no buffs. My God, is this good? It never stops. I mean, there's JD. Are you ready, man? Like you're. Oh, like this is. I'm a little concerned. You're gonna have like 10 shows a week here for the first couple of weeks of the season. Yeah, 10 to 13. Oh, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I'm fine. He's fine. And they will all be mixed absolutely perfect. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, you can uh, go to sleep uh, knowing at night. All right. Thanks so much for joining us here on Film Session. Until next time, Clipper Rose. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Oh, I love a. Uh three name man yeah. that plays sports so I'm going to list you off a few of them okay Pe- in, the, in this film we had Peter John Ramos quick, very very quick. yeah I barely saw him and for Puerto Rico he had I a dunk I think yeah. after uh, off in a royal pass okay. Juan Carlos Navarro make it yep. magic yep. and uh, Pepe Sanchez the point guard for yep. the Argentinian team his name was not Pepe they didn't give him the name Pepe out of the womb his name was Juan Ignacio Sanchez now oh, you know. Yeah. There's there's three three names for you. <laughs> cool. J.E. Skeets, is that a three? That's a good question. Justin Everett Skeets says goodbye. <laughs> Rest <laughs> the day, people. <laughs>